I've stopped using Obsidian anywhere near as much as I used it before, so in, in case you're worrying about clickbait, I have stopped using Obsidian, just not completely stopped. Some of the reasons I've stopped using Obsidian are, I think, fair and understandable. Others are a bit, um, stupid. Most of the reasons why I've stopped using Obsidian is because I'm working more with other people. To share some practical use cases here, at the moment I'm working out policies and procedures for Eastbourne Trampoline, and in order to do that I need to work with other directors and trustees of the organisation, which means we need a shared document. Obsidian, with the individuals that I'm working with, isn't an option, they're not tech savvy enough to understand Obsidian, share, sync, and all the rest of it, so Google Docs just works better and is easier. Subsequently, any information that I'm thinking about when it comes to policies, procedures, expectations, coaching philosophy, or anything else that relates to the handbook of Eastbourne Trampoline is going into the Google Doc. Previously, of course, because I worked for myself as an independent researcher, that was all going into Obsidian. So the, the shareability of Obsidian or the difficulty there is actually moving me away. The second reason that I've stopped using Obsidian is I'm not doing as much thinking. Now, bear with me. As I've spoken about before, most of my Obsidian use was research, and I'm thinking and writing together. If I come up with an idea, or I'm thinking about a concept, or some philosophy, or approach to psychology, or anything really, I'm then writing ideas down, thinking it through, rephrasing the wording, working out how to express and explain those ideas, one to myself, but also to think through the ideas so that if someone else asks me a question, I have a reference point to go back to. But because most of my time at the moment isn't in research, it's not in thinking through conceptual ideas or philosophy, it's putting those things into practice, most of my thinking is being done on the fly physically, whether it's talking to other practitioners, whether it's practicing the coaching myself, practicing the practice is what I wanted to say, but that sounds a bit odd. Or I'm doing my thinking through the practice while I'm doing the washing up or while I'm walking the dog or other minimally intensive activities. So I'm thinking through the ideas and then I go and do it. So I don't need to write it down before I do it because I'm just doing it straight away. So there's a, a quicker turnaround between thought and practice. Whereas previously it was thought, lots of thinking with obsidian writing, then practice. And this relates to the third reason that I've stopped using Obsidian as much, and that is well, partly because of this. So for those that haven't seen, this is a book that I made in PowerPoint and sent it to Amazon KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, and they sent me a not for release, that's what the black line across is, uh, sale of the book. So basically I made a, a book and then they sent it to me for free because it's a pre-order of the book. And if you look inside, there's a box at the top to say, yes, it's in my obsidian, and then some boxes down the bottom to say, this is related to whatever page. And although I trust obsidian, I know how obsidian sync works to make sure I don't get any conflict or merge issues or anything like that, going on my phone or going on my laptop isn't as easy for me when I'm writing down some of the ideas that I want to explore at the moment because some of the things that I'm writing down, they're squiggles, they're lines, which is harder to do in Obsidian. Some of the things I'm writing down are numbers, maths, calculations of fees and working out costs of venues, working out different ways that I could make the business, the finances of the business, work, which again with Obsidian and any writing tool, it's harder to do abstract math in, whereas a pen and paper, far easier. And then it comes to reading a book while I'm away, I'm writing those notes down in the in the notepad because I'm finding instead of, because I'm not on my computer writing notes in Obsidian, I'm on my phone or my laptop, instead of being able to quickly flick between the different files, it's a little slower, and that, when I'm reading, not ruins, but slows down the experience of reading the book and then flipping to wherever it is to take the note and coming back. Whereas on paper, I can write it on another page very quickly. I can just turn a couple pages, write it down, and I've already got the box at the top to say I've done that and moved it over to Morgan if it's something plan-worthy or Obsidian if it's something research-worthy. And the book makes that easier just to turn, write, go back. And it doesn't matter that I've moved off the page because I've got the related section down the bottom in the book. Now, this next reason is 
extremely frustrating and pretty stupid, but the course that I'm doing at the moment, the coaching course I'm doing at the moment because of paperwork reasons, has asked us to do lots of different note taking. But the note taking, we have to be able to show the other people when we go into breakout rooms, which means we can't take digital notes because there's no opportunity to share the screen with the software they're using. So I have to be able to go, hey, look, here's the warm up and show them the piece of paper which I'm writing the notes on. So the course that I'm doing doesn't actually let me take digital notes. So I'm, I, I can't use Obsidian or I can use Obsidian, but then I have to write it down on the paper anyway so I can show the camera. And I've had a few other experiences like that inside of this coach education world where I need to write something down on a pad, then show a camera rather than be able to share screen, which to me just seems so caveman. <laughs> but they're the experiences I'm having to deal with at the moment. So I imagine other people also have similar experiences where you can't just easily share screen or just show your obsidian document to someone or share it to someone. There are other people barriers in the way. Now that's not to say I'm not using obsidian. I am, as I mentioned at the start, still a little bit, and they are in long files, but as discussed, it's recording numbers, passwords, IDs, uh, pieces of information that I need for reference or reference numbers or small informational details that I need for applications, for funding requests and grants and making sure I'm writing the right thing and applying the right, what's the word, e explanation of funding. So I've, I've just taken down the points, focus on this, this, this and this in this sort of explanation and then for that funding request, focus on these points and it's not what I would class as in-depth thinking. It's making sure I'm ticking all the boxes that the um, corporate world expect you to tick. And partly due to this time constraint and everything else that I'm trying to do at the moment at once, obviously I'm researching less. So instead of finding out more information for the research files that I'm going around and doing with the projects, I'm actually trying to bring it all together into one file, which is where all of my traditional <laughs> note-taking PKM Obsidian writing work is being done. Now, the plan is for that to amalgamate to something. What that something is, I don't know. But I wanted to share that I'm not using Obsidian as much because if there are updates that come out and you ask me questions, I may not have the answers to the questions, so I want to be open and honest about that. Plus, it also gives me a bit of an opportunity to explain what I'm actually doing rather than just saying, I research stuff. I'm now starting Eastbourne Trampoline. Oh, and this is the sports coach in me. I'm really bad at the marketing stuff and sales stuff, as you've probably noticed. But if you want to find more about that, you can uh, uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Link in description.